Dear sewing friends, I am beyond happy with how this cardigan turned out. No joke, I just finished it and I cannot wait to share with you how to draft it and how to sew it. It's really easy to do both of those things. As always, if I can do it, then you can do it as well. So the trick question is, are you ready guys to make something beautiful for yourself today? Because I hope that you are. So let's get started. So this is another French inspired piece for my French mini capsule and I knew the general direction of where I wanted to go with it. So I wanted something slightly oversized, not too big, just slightly oversized with bishop sleeve because you guys know I love bishop sleeves and then something warm and cozy. And of course, the general idea is for it to work with all the rest of the pieces that I already have. So I think the tan or beige color works really well with all the other pieces. And then after I posted my last tutorial of Breton top, I got so many pictures from you guys of all the tops that you made using that tutorial. So I thought, you know what? How amazing that would be if we take the same base for that pattern and transform it a little bit and make it into a cardigan because that's something that I would totally wear and I'm so happy that I did. So if you've made the previous top, Bonus points for you. This is gonna be so very quick and easy for you guys. And if you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Let's start with the measurements. For our first measurement, we're going to start with the length of the actual garment. You're gonna take your measuring tape, you're gonna place it on the center back neckline, and then you're gonna drop it all the way to your tailbone. Once you have your finger on that measurement, take it away, and that's what's gonna go on our pattern paper. For me, as always, as you guys know, I take 21 inches. And remember that we will be adding band on the bottom of the cardigan, so the length will be extended, but you can also take longer or shorter, whatever you prefer. For this next measurement, we will only use one, but I want you to take all three, the bust, the waist, and the hips at the tailbone. If you are making a cardigan that is going to be longer than your hips, then you will need to take a measurement of your full hips as well. So you're gonna take your measuring tape, you're gonna measure all three, all full measurements, and then you're gonna determine which one of them is the biggest. Then you take that measurement and divide by four. So we're only gonna use a quarter of that. And then let's put that on our pattern paper. So quarter of my biggest measurement is nine and a half inches and we are going to build out a rectangle. And then from there, we will start building our pattern. Now that that is done, let's move on to the neckline. And usually in my tutorials, as you guys know, I do the front and the back neckline all in one. But since this is a cardigan, the front neckline is going to be considerably different than the back neckline. So let's start with the back. As always, I take three and a half inches to the right as half of the width of my neckline. You guys can take whatever you would like, but I always tell you start small first because you can always go bigger, but not the other way around. And then as a cheat sheet, you can always take a t-shirt or a cardigan that you already have and look up the width of the neckline there so that way you, you approximately know what you should go for. Now from the edge of your neckline take one inch up and then from the edge of your shoulder line take one inch down and then connect those two points with a straight line. That is going to be your new shoulder line. Now with a dash curved line draw the back neckline. As of the front neckline, you know, I really tried to do my best to think of the easiest way how to describe how to draft that curve of the front neckline since it's really irregular. And this is the best way that I came up with. So I actually drafted out a regular neckline that you would see, for example, on a Breton top. So that way you could clearly see the difference between one and the other. And then I draw that curve. Now that curve ends at about 10 and a half inches, which is actually half of the length of the garment. So you can use that as your guideline. Now for the width of your armhole is really easy. You take your measuring tape, you place it around like so, and then you measure it. Now you want to make sure that you give yourself not just wiggle room, but a little extra wiggle room because you have to think about this. Cardigan is going to go on top of already existing garments, so you don't want it to be too tight. Now for example, for the Breton top, I took seven inches, so that would make 14 inches all around. For this cardigan, I took eight inches, so I added an extra inch to make sure that there's plenty of room and it looks really nice. 
Okay, we're almost done with the bodice. Now extend the shoulder line by half an inch and extend the bottom of the armhole by half an inch as well. Connect the two dots and complete the bodice. Okay, let's move on to the sleeve. So for the sleeve, the easiest way to measure that when you were talking about drop shoulder is you take your measuring tape, you place it where the edge of the neckline would be, and then you stretch it out like this. Then you make sure that you can see how long of a sleeve you want it to be. So let's say, I don't know, 25 inches. Now 25 inches is the whole length from here till here. Now we only need the length of the sleeve. So you measure the length of your new shoulder seam seam, right, of your bodice, and then you minus that from the total length that you just recorded, and that is going to be the length of your sleeve. Now for the width of the sleeve, it's going to be exactly the same as our armhole, and I am not going to change the width of the sleeve at the wrist, I'm going to make it all uniform because I'm going to cinch it up and make it into a bishop sleeve. Now before we get done with the main pattern pieces of this cardigan, I want you to take the bodice piece of the pattern and cut it out, but only the bodice piece, don't touch the sleeve just yet. And while you're doing that, if you are a member of this channel, you do have instruction sheets available for this cardigan, the same way as you do for all the other sewing and drafting tutorials that I do on this channel. And if you're not sure what memberships are all about, it is a paid function where you get to support the channel, but you also get quite a few perks with it. And one of the perks is that I make either templates or instructional sheets for my sewing and DIY video. So if you're interested, check it out and maybe that's for you. Now, once you've done that, take your sleeve and align it with the shoulder line of the bodice to make sure that they go under the same angle. Make sure that the edge of the sleeve matches the edge of the shoulder line. Now, mark the bottom placement of the armhole of the bodice on top of the sleeve. Connect the two dots and cut away the excess. Now here's a quick thing about the sleeve. If you are making a bishop sleeve like I am, you will need to reduce the length of the sleeve with the same amount of length that you will be adding for the cuff. Otherwise, you're gonna have a super long sleeve. If you're leaving your sleeve just as is, just an, you know, an oversized sleeve, then you don't have to do anything extra. But if you are making a bishop sleeve, you will need to reduce the length of the sleeve by the amount of the length of the cuff. And we will touch up on this once we start making the cuff. All right, well, on to the sewing. Now, before we get into the sewing, you will need to cut your pattern pieces. Now, remember this, all of the tutorials that I do for sewing and drafting on this channel, I don't include any seam allowances, neither do I include any allowances for the hem. So you either need to add those to the pattern or as you're cutting your fabric. So just make sure that you remember that. All right, so now that all of your main pattern pieces for this cardigan are cut out, take the back of the cardigan and two of the front pieces of the cardigan, place them right sides together at the shoulder seams and sew them together. You can use a serger as I am using here, or you can use a sewing machine with a stretch stitch. Now, once that is done, go ahead and lay your cardigan flat. Now, take your sleeve, find the center of the sleeve, and put a little pin in there. Now, match that center of the sleeve with the shoulder seam of your cardigan. Make sure that the pieces are facing right sides together, pin them in place, and sew them. Now, once you have sewn, if your serger or your sewing machine gives you a little waves like that, not a big deal, go ahead and press it really nicely so that way all of your seams lay flat flat. After that, we will complete the sleeve and the side seam of the cardigan all in one go. So go ahead and place them right sides together. Make sure that the hem of the sleeve is matching. Make sure that the side seam is matching and then sew it together. Thank you. 
Now for this next step, you will need to draft the cuffs and this is really easy. This is how my cuffs look like. They're seven inches long and three inches wide and they're cut on the fold. Now for that, you will need to take your measuring tape and you will need to measure your wrist. Now remember that we spoke about decreasing the length of the sleeve. So if my sleeve was 18 inches long and my cuff is three inches wide, then I have to decrease the length of my sleeve by three inches. Now go ahead and open your cuffs and sew the side seams. Now take your sleeve and with the widest straight stitch available, do a straight stitch on the very edge of the sleeve. After that, gather it up and make sure that the width of the sleeve now is matching the width of your cuff. Now align the cuff together with the sleeve, make sure that the bottom seam of the sleeve is matching the bottom seam of the cuff, pin them in place and sew them. Okay, so to draft the bottom band of your cardigan, it's super easy. Go ahead and take the width of the bottom hem of your pattern and multiply that by 4. So for me, that's 9.5 inches times 4. Then determine how wide you would like it to be. For me, that's 3 inches. However, the band needs to be on the fold, so that would be 6 inches total. Once your band is cut, go ahead and attach it to the bottom hem of your cardigan. For the band around the neckline, it's really easy too. Take your measuring tape and measure the length of the back neckline, then measure the length of the front neckline, and multiply that by 2. Now for me that's 4 inches plus 23 inches times 2. Altogether that's 54 inches. Now don't forget that we also added the length to the actual garment by adding the bottom band. Now add that length to those 54 inches or whatever is your measurement to get the final length of the band that will go around the neckline of the cardigan. Then determine how wide you would like it to be and cut your band. Now my neckline is 2 inches wide and I have cut it as one continuous piece. However, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to cut it apart because I want to create an angled seam at the center back neckline to make sure that the fit is better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it by half an inch and then I'm going to cut it on the angle just like so. Then place these two pieces right sides together and sew them. Then sew the bottom of the neck band on both sides to create an enclosed ending. Now find the center back of the cardigan and align it with the center back of the neckline. Now start at the center back of the neckline and make your way down all the way down to the hem of the cardigan on one side and then repeat exactly the same on the other side as well. If you don't want a bulky seam at the center back of your cardigan, I suggest starting at the shoulder seam instead of starting at the center back. That will make your life a little bit easier. And that's it, how easy was that? Give this garment a really good press, add a belt if you would like to and some belt loops and you are ready to go. I'm really happy with this cardigan, I truly am. And I hope that it will encourage you to make something beautiful for yourself as well. Do check out these other tutorials that you see on the screen as well. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, happy thoughtful sewing. Bye.